Hello, friends, and welcome to Virtual Strangers 17. I'm your host, Wes. With me, as always, my friends, Alex and Roots. And we are back once again to talk about another jam-packed week of VR news, uh, as usual. So uh, the first item I want to talk about today is a title that was announced to much criticism, but since its release has grown to have quite a popular fan base, and that game is Tetris Effect. Uh, we first learned about this game in E3 of last year, and the reason why it garnered so much criticism, really it wasn't a criticism of this game, but a criticism of the fact that this was seemingly the crown jewel that Sony was bringing from a VR perspective to E3. Um, but uh, that said, going into that E3, there had been a lot of uh, false leaks. People were really expecting a lot that year. Uh, Bioshock VR, Super Hot Sequel, things like that is what we were looking forward to. And then we got Tetris Effect. And uh, nobody was happy about it. Everyone was mad, myself included. Uh, and there wasn't anyone particularly on the PC side of things that was jealous, saying, man, I wish I could play Tetris Effect. Now, that said, uh, we watched the trailer a few more times, and it's an amazing trailer. And as that uh, wound started to heal, people started to look forward to this game, and, and it came out, and it was amazing. It's an amazing game. I rented it myself a couple of weeks ago. Uh, or a couple of weeks ago, a few months ago, I kept it for a couple of months because there's a load of content here. Um, but yeah, apparently now uh, the news has released that this game, despite being a, a Sony PSVR exclusive, is coming to PC. And it's coming soon. It's coming next week. But here's the caveat. It's exclusive to the Epic Games Store. And for whatever reasons, a lot of people have a problem with that. But uh, this uh, this leads into a larger conversation that we're going to have later about exclusives. But uh, anyway, stay tuned for that. Anyway, this is coming to the Epic Store on July 23rd. Uh, confirmed to have VR support, which I found interesting that they were confirming that so early because I'm really not quite sure how it's going to work, if it's going to work through... Uh, Steam VR, like some of the other games have, uh, you know, you would assume so. But again, this game isn't going to be on Steam VR, so how would that would that work? But uh, anyway, um, Roots, you've played this game for a while, and uh, it's coming to PC next week. I'm sure we're going to have access to it. Are you going to play oh, it yeah. again? Um, I want to. I want to tweak up my graphics and just. I mean, it, it sounds stupid. People think, ah, oh, it's Tetris. Um, it's not that big a deal. But the visuals in this were so amazing on the PlayStation VR, and I'm using a vanilla, so I'd like to see what a 2080 can pump out of that. And uh, um, I'll play. I think I'll play more um, through this. I pretty much want have a uh, version of it sitting on my PlayStation, probably not getting played much because it looks. Um, I mean, it is, it's such an amazing game and, uh, I'm psyched to play it, whatever platform it comes on. Yeah, I agree. Uh, like I said, I've put a lot of hours into this game, played completely through the journey mode on it and put a, put a good hour or two into the effect modes to do some community play as well. And, uh, I think I'm going to play it again too, uh, for the same reason. I, I want to see what this game looks and feels like in a high-powered machine and i want to put emphasis on feels like because that's how this game is this game looks great it sounds great but the the real draw of this game the strength of it is the way all that stuff integrates together you kind of just feel the game as you're playing it, it it's hard to describe if you haven't played it before, but anyone who's played it knows exactly what I'm talking about. The the, the sounds, the sights, everything just kind of uh, works together in, in a very unique way. Uh, Alex, you've never played this uh, game before. Is this something that interested 
you before and is this something that you're looking forward to playing next week yeah this was a very divisive game actually there was a lot of people that obviously either loved it or hated it um i know it was up for like some game of the year awards and stuff and people were really baffled and you know shit on it a little bit um but i've always been interested in trying it personally you know I, I, not every game to me has to be you know standing up and waving my arms around sometimes i want a game where i can just kick back have a game pad and just you know just play uh something like this so this this looked like the, the music looks really cool the visuals are going to be really cool apparently there's going to be enhanced pc the graphic options they've unlocked the frames mm. Per second, so you'll be able to run at the full, you know, 80, 90, maybe even 120 or what have you on the index. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely wanting to try it, and um, I, I think I know what I'm, know what I'm getting really. So I don't think I'm going to be disappointed with it. Um, I think I'll enjoy it uh, definitely. Yeah. I think with oh with the epic thing actually, I will say that you can actually run through Steam VR stuff. So you. you on the drop down menu you can select whether you want to go through oculus or whether you want to go through steam vr so you, oh. it's like it's like if you play an oculus game you have to have oculus home open even through 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 steam so it's the same principle you've got to have steam vr open to be able to run uh it through through epic store see i always just kind of assumed that whenever you bought a game like subnautica or trover from the epic store that it just somehow by default tapped into some existing code that was already in there from the other version. So you're saying that there's a setting in the Epic client to let you choose which one you want to go with? When you launch the game, you can oh. click on a drop down menu and you can click to launch in Oculus or launch in Steam VR. So and with with Oculus as well, you can what you can do is if you you've launched it once into the headset you can it will then appear on your oculus home so you don't even have to have an epic client running you can have it shut down and just launch it straight through oculus home like it's an oculus game so it's really it's, it's not it's not really an issue i mean i know people really don't like having lots of different clients and we're going to talk about this obviously uh in tomorrow's video but um it, it's not a big deal if you want to use if you haven't got a problem with epic and their practices then don't let it put you off. Uh, what about the game? passwords, though? Like all the passwords you have. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well look, uh, I don't really want to get into it too much. What what he was referring to is tomorrow, our Monday uh, topical discussion show is going to be regarding exclusives, pros and cons. And uh, of course, those of you who participate in our discord know that already we kind of threw the topic out there to, to get some uh, differing points of view um but yeah i don't really personally have a problem with epic store or you play or any of these other places but epic store uh in particular uh they give the developers a better deal especially smaller developers uh so that alone is enough to to win my support and uh if they're going to be uh, carrying games like this and making it possible for uh, uh, games that are previously exclusive to platforms like Sony to come to PC, then I'm all for it. Um, so back to Tetris Effect. Uh, I said it is $40 at launch, but you can pre-order that for $32. So even though this is a kind of a steep price and it's debatable, you know, whether or not it's worth 40 or not, I would think that 32 is pretty fair for it. it it's a good, um, it's a good title. And, and as far as the divisiveness goes, amongst people who have played it, there, there's really two viewpoints here. Uh, one is that it's just Tetris in VR, and the other being that it's Tetris in VR. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, some people just. Are, are dwelling on the fact that it's not some kind of crazy new Tetris mechanic. It is just Tetris, but it's but like not. You, it's Tetris Like you VR. said, it's it's the mix of everything, and it's not only the visual and the sound, but it's the haptics too. Like your controllers are going and doing weird stuff too. Like it's the it's the coolest artistic version of Tetris I've ever seen. And um, for me, forty dollars is is 
a good deal for it, um, but I like Tetris to begin with. So, uh, but so I would jump on 32 uh, as a pre-order um, myself um, if I was the one buying this game. So, the, yeah. the pre-order price as well. You, it's, it, I think it's the first two weeks, so you don't have to pre-order it. The first two weeks of launch are going to be that price. Uh, okay, that's so good. yeah, yeah, and you've got <laughs> and you've got the full you've got the full refund policy as well, so you. You can ref- you've got your same. It's the same as Steam, I believe, with the two weeks and two hours sort of mm. thing. Okay, so that's perfect. And I don't want to get into a full full on review of it here, but of those of you that are on the fence with this, next week we'll be reviewing this from a not only a perspective of PlayStation VR, but by that point we will have played the uh, PC version as well, and we will be bringing you a full review next week and the fact that it's still on the the discounted price is great so uh if you guys don't know just tune in and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about it next week and uh see if we can't convince you or see if alex agrees with with roots and i and what we think about this game so yeah cool all right uh moving on uh tetris effect is not the only game that we're getting released next week on pcvr but uh, one that we've been waiting on for quite some time, Wolfenstein Cyberpilot, uh, comes out just three days later on July 26th. And uh, it's going to launch for $20 from Bethesda. And uh, they announced this game quite some time ago. It's been well over a year ago that they announced it. So we've been waiting on it for a while. The The consensus among the community is, is that they think that this is just going to be a basic wave shooter. Uh, and, and if that were the case, it seems a bit confusing to me why it would have taken so long uh, for them to release it. That this We've been looking at this same footage for, for well over a year now. And uh, th- this is a, a, a well-renowned developer and a, a beloved franchise. Uh, I personally can't see them bringing garbage to the table. What about you, Alex? Are, are you looking forward to this? you think it's going to be any good? I'm definitely interested in it. I mean, it's, it's weird that they've literally done no marketing or build-up to it. I mean, it's coming out next week. Is it Friday, I think, next Friday? Um, and there's, there's literally nothing. There's no extra footage. There's no extra information. We still don't 100% know what this game even is. It, it, you know, we know that you're going to be some sort of cyber pilot where you get hacking into these uh, enemy mechs and bloodhounds and all these different things. And that sounds cool, you know, being if you can get into that. Because I've played the Wolfenstein games, and there are like, these big mechs like you can see there walking out. So if you get to get in there and actually have free control of these things and you're moving your arms around like Ar- Archangel, but you're actually free moving it around and everything, that could be really cool. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, it's, it's just... It's obviously priced cheap. Um, I think is this the same price as Doom VFR? I believe that was the same sort of price. It was, uh, it was around there, yeah. Yeah, so it's just the same sort of price as that, and that was a kind of shortish three-hour thing. So I expect this will be like two, probably three hours max. Um, I, I'm not expecting a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll try it out definitely, and obviously let everyone know what it's like. But um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm not going to shit on it because. <laughs> I don't think you know. I, I haven't tried it, and I, I think it could. It's got potential to be fun. I don't think it's going to be amazing. I don't think it's going to be the best game ever, but I think it could still be worth fifteen pounds or twenty dollars. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you took the word out of my mouth there. Honestly, I think this is going to play like Archangel. I think it's going to have uh, a, a, a story to it. Not maybe not the most detailed, complex story. But I think it's going to have a story. I don't think it's going to be a, a stationary wave shooter. I think it's going to be on a rail, and you're going to go on a rail through a campaign. It's going to be a shooter game, an arcade shooter game, and uh, those generally uh, tend to be fun in most cases. I don't even know if it is on a rail, because if you watch, you can see he's actually controlling the, the that dog. It looks like he's got movement, like he's moving backwards, forward, left, right. So I, I think that you have full control of these these things. Oh, so okay. I don't think it's going to be on a rail. I think it's going to be maybe, I think, I don't know. I, I, I'm curious. I, I think it might be, you know, going through levels and and uh, it might be story driven. I think it could be, it could be half, half decent. Like I say, I don't think yeah. it's going to be amazing, I, I think, but I don't think it's going to be terrible. So, 
Right. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Roots, what do you, what do you think? You think it's going to be any good? Uh, it's Bethesda, so it, it's got the possibility. It definitely looks like it's graphically going to be amazing. My only – there's two things that worry me. One is um, there's another – uh, game that's coming out, Wolfenstein g game coming out the exact same day. As a matter of fact, I've got the game. Um, it came with my graphics card. And uh, so it could be a cross promotion, just like a, a thing that they're throwing out there. The price worries me a little bit. That's not so much. Um, and then, you know, even though it's not a rail shooter, but I know what you're meaning by that. Like it's very directed in where you can go. Um, and right. so. Uh, I, I don't have very much expectations. I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be good. I think it's not going to be a turd. I mean, it's Bethesda, but, um, <laughs> you know, whether I will like it or not, I mean, I, I don't know. My One of my games for the, that I picked for this week was Dick Wild too, and I like it, so I'll probably like it, you know? So, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, sure. Wolfenstein games have always been very linear, so I don't – it's not going to be – it's going to be very linear. It's going to be you go down his path and guys probably come at you and you fight them off sort of thing. So I don't think they're going to do anything majorly interesting, but just being in a mech or being in a dog and what have you could still be interesting and fun. So I don't think we should write it off yet until we oh, try yeah. well, it. Being in Wolfenstein uh, world is not. amazing, right? So uh, Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're great looking games. So if they've got those sort of assets and that quality of level of AAA quality, even if it is just two hours, I think it's still going to be two hours of fun. Um, yeah. Right. Right. I think that the, you, that's probably our our biggest concern here is how long is it going to be? Because shooter shooters are something that's really hard to mess up in VR. It's just fun to shoot things and destroy things. So uh, I have faith that Bethesda is going to have the game mechanics down. The question is: Is it an hour? Is it a two hour? Is it three hours? How, how much content do we have here, and uh, how good is the story? But uh, I don't think there's any question that it's going to be worth our time uh, playing it. Um, so you said this one comes out on Friday, Alex, is that right? Uh, it's 26th, which I'm just going to look at calendar. Yeah, yeah, that's Friday. So uh, Yeah, so we'll, we'll, have, we'll have impressions next week, but then probably review right. maybe a week after. So. Right, right. So we'll have some very quick early impressions next week unless this game really does turn out to be super short and we might have a lot more than early impressions <laughs> but uh, uh, come back next week and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little more about this one yep. alright uh, so moving on uh, more new game announcements actually no this was uh, from Comic Con last week we announced that uh, the Marvel panel was going to include some exclusive Iron Man VR footage, uh, a playthrough, a Let's Play, a bunch of other stuff. Well, we didn't get all that stuff from a public, you know, standpoint. I'm sure people who were there got to see a lot more than what we got. But what we did is get is this little three to four minute um, feature video that they released, and we got our first real gameplay footage of it, uh, along with some narration and commentary uh, from the development team here. Uh, early impressions of the trailer, it does appear to be mostly flight-based. Everything that they showed was uh, based around the game mechanic of being a flight-based shooter game. That said, even if it's one-dimensional, I think that this particular uh, style of play can be very fun, very free, to just be able to fly around if the controls are good to be able to just fly around at very high speeds and blast things out of the air is a interesting concept to me it sounds like it might be a lot of fun um roots what do you think did you see this footage what did you think oh, about i thought it? it looked really cool kind of um you know zipping around the sky reminds me of that one what's that alien game that uh where you destroy the ships and stuff and you're um yeah, Megaton, Megaton, Rainfall. Megaton Rainfall. Like, if the flying is anything like Megaton Rainfall, this game could be amazing because that I I think still think that game is really cool. Um, but uh, I I think um, I was really impressed with with what I saw in this game. So it does give me hope that it's going to be a you know night and day difference from all the other Marvel VR stuff we've seen. 
Right, right. And what what really sticks out to me here, though, the 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 environments are beautiful. I mean, these the sky environment looks cool. The ocean environment looks cool. But this this is a superhero game. Uh, you would expect that the majority of the gameplay in a superhero game would take place in a metropolis in a downtown area, and they showed zero of that. Uh, Alex, do you think that we need to be concerned that they haven't shown any kind of uh, Metro-style gameplay here? Uh, no, I mean, they're only showing the beginning of the game by the looks of it, so I don't think they want to show too much off. I mean, I was a little bit... I was expecting them to show a little bit more off than they did because the way that they hyped it up with the whole, we're going to get, we've got this, we've got that, with Greg Miller and this, that and the other, and I was thinking, oh, we're going to get loads of information and, and footage, and we literally just got this kind of little documentary type video about flying so it was kind of a bit disappointing but i guess they're going to build hype gradually and and you know release some videos going through each individual aspect of the game but the, the, the from what i saw it does look really cool i mean they, they show a section where there's a guy and he's like got his hands out and he's flying backwards so it looks like you've got full control with your hands and you can put your hands behind your back and everyone who's tried it who's like written about it have said that this game looks it plays really well, and they've done a really good job with the movement and everything. So I think this is going to be good. I, I, are we going to fly through cities and stuff? I don't know. I mean, they're going to have to work around the limitations, obviously, of the PS4 and what they can do with that. So, um, I mean, obviously, Megaton Rainform worked, but it was very basic kind of visually. It's like a PS2 game. So I don't think we're going to be able to see anything spectacular going through cities and things. But... I think if they get the movement right and they, they, they have areas where you've got to fly accurately through different areas and stuff, and yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether it's going to be like open world and you can go anywhere or whether they're going to have set pieces. And Yeah, I think this is going to be cool, and I'm looking forward to it. The more I see of it, the more I'm interested in it. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it looks like a cool concept. Really, it looks like um, that game Justin likes, Jet Island. It looks like a super polished jet island with, with different uh environments but uh, a lot of potential here the people that have played it uh all seem to say that it that it handles and plays very very well and it's a lot of fun uh the developers themselves said that uh the game is going to be built around a deeply personal story so uh you know that that is music to my ears that's what i like i like for a game to be uh, driven by a story uh, so, you know, good gameplay, good graphics, good story. Uh, the more I hear about this game, the more I'm looking forward to it. So. Yeah, especially with the way people shit right. on games these days, right? Like people are looking for a reason to, to shit on them. So if everybody is saying that, that the gameplay is good, um, I, I take stock in that. I mean, you know, that's just my personal opinion. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I agree. I think. Uh, it's still still too early to tell. Hopefully, there's some more uh, gameplay modes that you're not going to be flying around through the whole thing. But even if you are, uh, if it's done right, it could still be a lot of fun. And this but, this uh, is a big seller for VR as well. I mean, Iron Man. The fact that you're going to be able to be an Iron Man and look, at, imagine all the streamers who are going to get this game and they're going to put it on YouTube and kids are going to see it and they're oh shit, I can be Iron Man like in VR and it's going to hell sell. So many headsets, I think. I think, I mean, we haven't got a release date, but I imagine this is going to be a, towards the end of the year and maybe some sort of like Christmas bundle or something because they always do bundles with these big games. And yeah, Sony are really doing the right thing and, and they just keep banging out these incredible games and then doing these bundles. And even my brother in law has bought a PS, PSVR for his family, and it's just more and more people are just getting, uh, we, we're going to easily, you know, top. Five million by the end of the year, headsets. Uh, in fact, I think we'll be more like six. So. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if they've already crossed five million at this point and just haven't announced it because they were, they were over, uh, well over four. So last... Four point two, and that was in yeah. May. So yeah. they've got have to know, be, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I agree. They Sony continues to use software to to drive the platform. And uh, they they're getting better at it. I I kind of get the feeling that you know in the years like last year, for example, 
they were still kind of unsure uh, about whether or not they should put their faith completely in VR. But this year, I'm kind of getting the feeling that that they're going with it. They've decided uh, that it, that it's going to be something significant, and they're they're finally starting support to support it. Now that said, they've been quiet for the last little bit, last month or so. Not a whole lot of announcements, software-wise, and uh, it really, uh, it's really starting to raise my anticipation level because I know something's going to be coming any time now. Uh, the next big announcement. That that said, um, despite being absent from any any and every trade set show thus far this year, Sony is going to be at Gamescom next month in Germany. So. That'll be something to watch. I'm sure they're going to be announcing something. It may not be the biggest thing in the world, especially with, with VR, but uh, uh, considering the fact that they haven't announced any new games uh, in, in the last little period here, I would imagine that we're going to be hearing something uh, very, very soon. I think, well, how long has the PSVR been out? Was it two years? Two or three years? That. Coming up? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Two and a half. Because I think the thing we've got we've got to remember is that because I know you said that they've kind of backed off. I don't think they've backed off. I think it's just games take time to make. Like you know, it takes a good couple of years for a AAA developer to make a game. So this game could have been in development for for eighteen months ago, but we won't know about it. So there's going to be stuff in development now that we won't know about until next year, twenty 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 one, that are going to blow our minds. It's just we don't know about them yet. But um, oh, we've all, you've all sorry. No, I was just, just you're misunderstanding what I mean. I have no doubt about that. I'm not worried uh, about it in the least. Uh, but I know that Sony's going to have a strong lineup of games going into the holiday season this year. And the fact that they've been quiet for the last four to six weeks or so, not a whole lot of announcements, not a whole lot of talk about new games, it's making my anticipation level rise. I'm looking yeah. forward to hearing what the, the next thing is going to be. And I have a feeling it could be something pretty significant. Uh, that's all I mean. I'm not the least bit. No, no. About... I, I, I think the other thing as well is that we're coming to the end of the console life, and you always get a little bit of a drop because obviously they don't want to really release in. We'll we'll see the last of the big games like The Last of Us Two and stuff for flat and stuff, and there'll still be the odd bit come out. But I think there'll be a big push now where you've got stuff being developed for PS5, and then obviously. When PS5 comes, we'll get these launch titles and stuff. So we'll see more stuff. And like every year, they've done a big title like Skyrim, uh, Borderlands 2. There's going to be something else this year. They always end up announcing it, you know, like three months or two months before. So we, we've got something big. I, I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe Bioshock or something. But uh, right. the, every year they, they bring out something, some sort of port of a of a big. Let me ask you this, Alex. Well, oh, sorry. Well, um, is there a game that they could announce that was coming to PSVR that would just not, fuck waiting? I'm in. Like I'm getting it. I, you know, like is there something out there that you just would be that tipping point, that game for you? No, because I know I'm gonna get one eventually anyway. So it's kind of like it's. I mean, it's that close to. Because even if I wait for PS5, I can then get one for. There'll be. PS4s for really cheap, so I can get a PS4 cheap and then do it then, or I can get a PS5. And so it's just I'm just that close to that that point now where I'm just going to wait. I've already decided it, so I can't think of any game that come out which would really make me pull the trigger and and just get one. But and then plus we've got the Epic situation. We don't know what else is going to end up coming across to Epic. Mm -hmm. So you know, for all we know, there could be some some other ex exclusive stuff that come on Epic that we can play on PC. So. True. Wouldn't that be amazing? Resident Evil 7 VR exclusively <laughs> on Epic Store. True. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, No, I don't either. I don't know. But uh, people's, people's <laughs> heads will explode. I don't know, man. People wouldn't be happy. I don't yeah. Know. Well, people would be getting an Epic people account is what they'd be doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll leave that talk for uh, tomorrow's episode. <laughs> yeah right yeah right, right. but uh yeah i know what you're saying yeah there's definitely some big announcements coming some big ports for sure i know specifically fire sprite games the developer behind the persistence is working on a a, a globally known uh 
a port IP. of a, a, a popular IP RPG type uh, IP. I don't. They haven't announced hmm. what it is, but they've teased it a couple of times now. And uh, I'm as good of a job as they did on the persistence. I'm really looking forward to seeing what that that's going to be. And and uh, you know, uh, there's really no telling. It could be anything, but uh, I, I'm really excited for that one just to hear what it is. You know? Anyway, moving on. Um, all right, so we just talked about the Iron Man VR. Uh, we just recently got another popular Marvel franchise uh, to come into VR, and that was the uh, free Spider-Man Far From Home VR experience. And, um, you know, uh, there wasn't very much expectations for this one going in because the first Spider-Man tie-in VR title was um, was underwhelming, and a lot of people weren't very happy with it. But coming into this one, night and day difference. A lot of people uh, like this game. It's a lot of fun. I played it. You guys both played it and enjoyed it. And we really were surprised at how much content there was here for free. This is a free title. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, there's a, a like a campaign mode, which is just a few minutes long, but then there's a free play mode with different trials and things you can go through that adds a lot of replayability, and, and it's just fun to play in general. Well, this past week on PSVR exclusively, PSVR exclusively, they updated this. They added two more combat trials, uh, two more time trials, and a handful of more collectibles. So as good as this was, for free to begin with, it's even better now. And uh, even though it is exclusive to PlayStation VR, uh, it is coming to PC very soon. They they said there isn't. Of course, there's not a date for it yet, but it's coming. I would imagine in the next few weeks, these updates are going to come in. Um, Alex, this is pretty amazing for Sony to support a free title like this. Um, are you surprised that they're continuing to update it? And uh, are you going to go back in it, into it to check out the new updates? I won't go back into it, but it's, I think it's incredible that they are. Because don't forget, this is just like you said, it's just a movie tie-in. This isn't a paid, paid game. It's a free movie tie-in. And we've seen in the past how poor these movie tie-ins generally are. They, they tend to be very short, five minutes, you know, just they're barely even worth bothering, to be honest with you. But I think it's just. I think it just shows how much more popular VR is. That they, they, there's clearly a bigger audience that are actually enjoying and playing this, and and so many are obviously seeing the response. Probably seeing all the videos they're getting put on YouTube from people doing this stuff on YouTube. That's what the exposure they want. They want this put in on YouTube, and then people watch it. And you know, Spider Man, this new movie coming out. They all oh, I can play it in VR, and it's all publicity for them. So I think it's just showing that. As time goes on, these movie tie-ins are probably just going to get better and better, and I think we'll see more of investment in these sort of things because they are effectively like a mark marketing thing. They're being used in the marketing budget, so you can't, you don't really expect them to spend loads on it, but they, they they're spending more and more on them. So, good news. Yeah. For... Oh yeah, this I don't know. It just seems like. It feels different now. It feels like the VR, and I've said it every week for the past, you know, two months. It feels like we're hitting a new level now. That we're starting to seep into the mainstream a bit more, and uh, I think this is another example of that. And um, yeah, I, I think specifically talking about this game, I think I will go back into it. But it's not just because of the new updates. I really haven't put that much time into the, the free play anyway, but I, I did recently see this movie. I just saw this movie, and I think I, I, it might resonate with me a bit better now that I know the characters and the voices, and, you know, I'm, I'm more familiar with this specific universe now. So I'll probably go back into it just because of that. Um, 
What about you, Roots? Are you going to go back in and check out the uh, updates? Not the updates, because I don't know that I would know the difference of what's been added or what's not. But I, I'm like you. I want to check it out just because I think it, it's a really cool experience. Um, Dev, you put your kids in this? I know you talked about um, one of them being like a huge Spider-Man or superhero fan to this. Not uh, no, no, not yet. I showed it to them, and they, they, they're going to play it. I haven't been around a lot uh, lately, yeah. <laughs> to, to be honest. I haven't been around to, to facilitate that. They're not allowed to just uh, pick up my VR headset whenever they want and put it on. Now, my, my oldest is. She can, and uh, she could get into it anytime she wanted to. But uh, the younger two, the boys, uh, they have to have somebody here to facilitate the, uh, the setup process. And I've been working a lot lately, but uh, it's coming for sure. Uh, they're going to play this. So. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, I don't know. I, th I think they did this, you know, the, like you were saying, that it's seeping in the mainstream and um, everything, like the, the Splinter Cell. I know it's rumors, but again, we're one week later. Still haven't heard a, a re rebuttal or from either company saying, no, 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 that's not true. Um, I just think we are, as we were talking about the last game, um, Iron Man, I just think we don't realize how close we are. And I was literally going to ask you guys, like, do you think there's going to be a few people that feel really, really stupid this time next year? when Because it's not even been that long since the whole VR is dead thing, right? And it's like <laughs> so ridiculous and now, even just now looking back, um, and we've got all this stuff on the horizon. I just think we're, we're, we're set to see some really cool stuff come out very soon. Yeah. Apparently VR is a zombie now because it was dead and now it is risen <laughs> from the dead and come back to yeah. life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It just feels different. Uh, I read an article yesterday that the, um, the, the creators of black mirror have, uh, we're, we're talking about the possibility of, of remastering all of their episodes in VR. How cool would that be? Um, and, and specifically what you were talking about, those Ubisoft titles, uh, Splinter Cell and Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft had their uh, had an investor meeting last week where they were uh, specifically asked about VR, and they didn't deny it. They, uh, they basically... Uh, Reaffirm. They didn't come right out and confirm it, but they basically said that uh, it's going to take uh, software support like that to, to grow VR into the kind of platform that they want it to be. That they support VR and the, and they're they're looking forward to doing their part to to help it, grow it. And it's going to take uh, games like that to 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 uh, reach the goals. And six have. months ago to a year ago, every big company was shitting on VR. We are not doing VR. They were quick to say, no, 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 we're not doing VR. So that's huge. Just that, what you just said to me is music to my ears. And, um, you know, I don't think everybody should be expecting Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell six months from now. But it just means we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, in a related a bit of news. I mean, I could go on and on with this stuff. <laughs> Time Magazine this past week uh, opened up a division to uh, create AR and VR content for their magazine. So they're going to like use it to create educational experiences. The first one that they're putting out is an AR experience, but just the fact that they're, they've built this whole new division for this kind of AR VR content is, is a big thing. And you're, you're seeing this stuff everywhere. And uh, I, I, it's just different, you know. Things are just different now, and it, it, it's, it's more and more obvious mm -hmm. every day. So. All right, um, moving on, unless you guys have anything else about Spider-Man you want to talk about. No. Um, right, Spider-Man update wasn't the only thing that PSVR got last week. Uh, they also got a demo for my game of the year thus far, Blood and Truth. And... Um, this is kind of odd, unexpected, really, because we kind of already had a, a Blood and Truth demo, and that was called The London Heist on PSVR Worlds. Um, but anyway, this is a free demo, unlike, unlike PSVR Worlds, which you can still pick up on sale all the time for around 5 to $7. Uh, 
but this is completely free. It's the entire first level of the game, which is pretty epic. You know, it wows you from the very beginning. And I think it's cool. I think it's cool that they're giving out the first level for free. Um, it may be even be better as a new player demo than the London Heist was because it's it's certainly more polished. Um, it's It's got the, the car chase scene, which was the... Uh, the big thing from the London Heist was the chase scene. This first level has that and more. And, um, yeah, I think it, even though it devalues PSVR Worlds quite a lot, because that was the big draw for PSVR Worlds, I think it's a good thing. And for anybody out there who has a PSVR and doesn't have blood and truth, maybe because it costs too much or you're concerned about the locomotion, uh, definitely, 100%, download this free demo and uh, and try it out because I think that you're going to be surprised. Um, Roots, uh, do you agree? Do you think that uh, that this is a more uh, is more palatable for a new audience than than even the the PSVR world? Oh hell yeah! Uh, the thing this has is your play you know like you're playing the story you know there's more coming you you're not who's gonna play level one and stop i think it's brilliant like we always talk about games how they should put out demos but then there's you don't want to give them too much of the um the game and we've already established that the beginning i mean just everything about it it makes sense to me it, it's such a good idea and um i think it will get uh, huge sales for them yeah, I agree. A lot of people, like I said, have been driven away by the, the high price or the locomotion style. But this is so much better as an intro title for a new player because, you know, the London Heist was stationary. There was no locomotion in it. This game, you move seamlessly throughout it. I know it's node-based, but it's not what you think. You really don't think about the locomotion you have locomotion, but you don't think about it. You're kind of just free to play, not thinking about, you know, controlling your movement. You just kind of look where you want to go and you go there. Not only that, like I said, there's a lot more diversity to this level than you get with the London Heist. And this level is kind of developed uh, as a tutorial. This is a tutorial level to teach you how to play. So it'll be easier for a new player to pick this up because it's going to teach you uh, uh, how to play it as you go. And uh, don't be fooled. It's not some rinky-dink tutorial level. This thing is epic. It's epic. Uh, so if you haven't tried Blood and Truth yet, please, trust me, play this level. I, I really think you're going to dig it. Um, all right, so this wasn't the only demo that came out last week either. Surprisingly... Uh, I don't know if you guys heard anything about it earlier, but I didn't know it was coming. The Vertigo 2 demo uh, launched last week, and uh, I knew the game was coming. I didn't know that we were going to be getting a demo, and I especially didn't know we were going to be getting it so soon. Um, I didn't play it yet, but I did watch uh, or, or, or hear some reviews. I didn't watch any gameplay, but I heard some reviews. People, for the most part, enjoyed it, um, but I think there were some questions about performance uh i think the both of you played this right so alex uh what was your experience with the vertigo 2 demo uh i really liked it yeah i didn't, I didn't actually have any performance issues so i don't know whether it's an oculus thing or i don't know what's going on with that but it, it ran fine for me um <clears throat> yeah this is really cool this is a this is a game that's not coming out until next year and they've got literally an hour demo i mean it takes an hour to play through this thing so the game must be pretty pretty big if they're going to give that much away already. Um, the game has got a really... The first game was quite a low-poly, sort of low-texture, very simplistic graphics. Um, but the, the thing that it did well was the, was the light, and the way it used light was really good. And this this is kind of like a step on from that, so the graphics are better, the, but they are still kind of low-poly-ish. Like, it feels kind of like a, a game from... It feels like a... You know, like a Half Life Two. I know people have compared it to Half Life Two a lot, but it has got that feel, not just in 
the environments, but the feel of that, the the, pol- the aesthetic of the poly- polygons and the textures and everything, they feel like a game from that sort of age. Um, but it's got some really good lighting. Again, they've really done well with lighting. Like your wristwatch has got like a brushed aluminium sort of effect, which shines in the light. You go through this glass tunnel and the 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 glass looks real, like the way that it reflects and everything. So the developers are really good with light, the way that they've used light. Um, I'm not sure what game engine this is running on, but it's, it's really, really impressive the way that they've used the lighting. Um, there's a few, there's a few issues. I mean, I, I'll say that I really enjoyed the game. Um, I enjoyed the, the the hour. I wanted to keep playing it. It was great. It was. It feels like a proper, like uh, it'll be something you're gonna like, Wes, because it's, it's you know it's, it's kind of a linear. It's a linear story driven adventure sort of shooter game and it, it's really feels well, really well done it's got voice acting it's got you fight these robots at the end and they, they actually come rushing at you and kind of try and flank you and you know we don't always get many of those games out there that do that they're, they're very generally very basic and wave shooters so this is a game that i'm really looking forward to um the, the issues that I had, there's some game breaking bugs, which I'm pretty sure they're probably aware of, might even fix by now. But the audio cut out for me twice. The only way to get the audio back was to get leave the game and go back in. Um, there was something wrong with the weapons, uh, where the weapons would make in the noise. Like I had to, to get this magnum, like a big handgun, and you'd fire it, and the noise would make a noise, but there'd be no bullets flying out, and I've got all these robots coming at me, and I'm thinking, why? I kept dying, and why the hell are they not dying? And then I realised that there were no bullets. So, Blanks. and then and then the shotgun, yeah, the shotgun was basically unlimited. No, normally, you only get six shots, and you have to reload it. And this was like fi- firing constantly, and the the, the uh, ammo count wasn't going down. So there's some weird bugs with the weapons. Um, not non bugs, which I, I'd also I'd give. Feedback to the developers is one's the shotgun. Uh, you 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 I don't know you've played Duck Season, but you, it's got a similar system system where you put your hand near it and it kind of just automatically attaches to it. You don't have to press a button or anything. Uh, I'd rather have a button press where you actually have to press a like with the index controllers. Have it where you actually just hold the controller to hold it. Um, and also, when you cock the gun, there's no button to press to cock it It'll, if you move your hand accidentally sometimes you can cock it by accident so with that with Pavlov they have it where it's set to the trigger so you have to hold the trigger down to cock it they could do the same thing with this maybe have you squeeze the index controllers to to do it or something but that, that, they're the main things and then the other one was um, you go underwater uh, and it's going to depend on how much underwater stuff there is in this game because it's quite short the bit you do but if they do go into the water a lot I'd like I love it if they could do like the um, what's that free diver sort of movement where you're moving your hands around because all they do is you basically wherever you point the controller you go so if you want to go down you point the controller down and it was okay but obviously if you've got larger sections in the game it'd be awesome if they'd ever do something where you're actually swimming through the environment and everything but other than that I loved it I thought it was really good there's a bit where you go outside and there's like a massive open area and there's this thing that flies down these robots come out of it and it just it's got a really nice look and feel to it the, like the graphics even though they're not the most high poly you know high textured things there's just the weather and the light and the feel of the game is really good and I, I, it's really because i wasn't that hyped about it but now i'm definitely far you know it's, it's coming out next year but i'm definitely looking forward to to this game yeah, uh, graphically it looks like from the trailer it looks like Apex Construct level graphics. Uh, it looks like Apex Construct with a Higgs unit. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Yeah, to me. Yeah. But uh, uh, you said you got an hour into this thing, this demo. Uh, PD posted a video saying that he found a secret area in it. Did you find that? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that is. But I, I didn't find anything. There's loads of different doors, and I didn't go through every single door. So yeah, it was something a, like that. Yeah, there's the a rooms. bit where you go through. You go through a underwater section, and you can turn left if you do that. <laughs> you go around this corner, and there's this big monster like waiting for you. And yeah, that, 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 yeah, okay. I quickly turned around and went back out. But yeah, there's <laughs> there's some good humor in it as well. Like the 
loading screens have got like little tips and stuff and and uh just some of the just some of the little they they do reference like they give you a crowbar and he's like the robot says what the hell are you going to do with that so they're referencing Alfie Half Life with that and stuff so it's got some good humor um good production value good good voice acting I think it's going to be a really good game I, I'm looking forward to it yeah I, I gotta hand it to these devs too they're doing a great job of promoting their game you know a month ago I had zero interest in this franchise at all. And uh, they, they put that trailer out. It was a really cool-looking trailer. Piqued my interest. I thought, oh, you know, maybe that'll be pretty cool. And now they put this demo out, out of nowhere, and uh, good reviews left and right. Now, all of a sudden, I'm very interested in it. And just that, you know, just like that, uh, they've gone from nothing to, to a highly anticipated game. Uh, Roots, what, what's your experience with this demo? Uh, well, first I want to say it's pretty smart, just like the last, like we were saying earlier, you know, f- releasing a demo the right length and just enough to let people see exactly what it is. I, I just think it's really brilliant um, the way they're doing this. Uh, you know, I, I didn't experience, like, I didn't have problems per se. Um, I just monitor whenever I go into a new game, especially a demo, I like to run my monitoring equipment. Um, and it just like my video card and my processor were running way too much um, information was was or was being drawn or something. I don't know what the hell was going on. And so it was like Alex even said um, when I asked him about it, he said, oh, yeah, it, it ran at 45. It kicked it to ASW or whatever um, it's considered on the index. Um I just, uh, it's not optimized as well as it could be, but it's a demo. But I did enjoy it. It's very beautiful. I did enjoy it. I didn't play the full thing. I probably played about three quarters of it, but uh, um, everything felt good. The the gunplay, the guns, the, like Alex said, the story was funny. It was, I, I definitely um, am like you. I didn't even know that the first one existed, let alone uh, that the second one was coming out. And um, I am psyched to, to play it now. So uh, kudos to the devs for doing things the way I feel like VR up until the last six months ago had their heads up their ass, like with everything, the way they release their games, all of a sudden a game's just out. There's like there's no rhyme or reason to anything. But now, as you see, like the bigger devs or the the ones that know what they're doing are coming out and they're they're um, doing it the way every other gaming um, release has ever been done. And and uh, it's working. So I, I think it's good. Yeah, agreed. We're finally getting our big boy pants on and learning how to how to do things here. <laughs> Uh, in the big world but uh, yeah this game I, I'm looking forward to it I'm probably going to play the demo sometime this week if I can find time it really wasn't a, uh, a lack of, of will on my part I wanted to try it out but as I mentioned earlier I've been uh, working a lot I haven't had a whole lot of extra time uh, but this looks cool it looks uh, like it has a, a cool science fiction feel to it uh, a lot of nice corridors and things to explore which I love and uh, those guys have hands that's for heads. Weird. That, that's <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll be checking this out later, and uh, I look forward to it. Cool. All right, moving on. Something I did have time to uh, check out this past week was the I Expect You to Die Sea of Power DLC. And uh, I'm not going to get into too much specific details about this one because – this is going to be one of the games that we review this week. Cat out of the bag. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> uh, so we're not going to do a, a big time in, in-depth review here because we're going to do that uh, one day this week. But uh, specifically regarding this DLC, uh, you know, I, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it it was par for the course. It was more of the same. It was if you've played this this game, you know that there's two kinds of levels in this game. Uh, You have the common type, which is don't make the wrong move or you'll die. And then you have the less common type where you have 10 seconds to make the right move or you're going to die. This is the the former. This is a don't make the wrong move or you're going to die type level. Uh, I played through most of it. Got right up to the very end of it. I played it today, by the way, just before the show. Um, 
I found what I was looking for. I did not make my escape. Um, but it was fun. The 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 puzzle puzzle difficulty was on par. It was a cool looking level. It was designed. Everything looked very good. It was uh, pretty much what I expected it to be. Uh, Alex, what did you think about it? Yeah, I was I was a little disappointed with it. It's not uh, it's not the best one out of, out of the, the levels. I'd say it's probably the, my least favorite, to be honest with you. It, it was it, it felt kind of basic. There wasn't really like much to really interact with and do. You've basically got everything you can interact with is kind of what you need to actually use. Uh, and there's maybe only like five different objects, so you, I only died twice, and you know that's in, I think that's the least amount of times I've died in one of these levels. And I finished finished it like 20 minutes or something, so it wasn't really much of a challenge. Um, it, the bit where you're stuck is is more kind of like not really knowing what to do, rather than I oh, just yeah. Keep, yeah, it's just that I had the same problem. I just I just didn't really know what the hell I was doing. And, I just kept pressing stuff and eventually figured it out. But it, it just, I don't know, it just didn't feel the same. My favourite one is the one that's playing on the screen now, which is the first class, which is the other DLC they did. And that one felt really good. Uh, it was like a yeah. much longer, more difficult level. So to to go from that, I was kind of hoping that they were going to keep building on it and making better and better levels. But this felt to me like a step backwards. It was the least favourite. It's still worth playing if you've already got the... Um, if they've got the game, just boot it up. You know, it's, it's there in the rack. You pick it up, put it in, and you can play it. And it's worth trying out for free. But it's not the best one. It's, in fact, it's the worst one out of the lot. Yeah, I, I don't think it's the worst one. Uh, well, I know which one yours is the worst one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, but you're right. It's not particularly difficult. But that said, I didn't really find very many of them to be all that difficult. It's it's uh, most of it's trial and error stuff. There there are some things that are, you have to uh, to think about, but for the most part, it, this is a pretty much an easy game. But um, I, well, I like there's an interest. I don't want to ruin it, but there's an instrument in this DLC that I thought was really cool. I liked using it. Oh it yeah, what you mean. It, yeah. it was different from from other uh, things that you have throughout the game, but uh, I do concur. I didn't like it as well as the the other DLC, the first class DLC, which we're looking at by the way on the screen right there. Uh, this was an awesome level. It was really really cool, really fun, and the way it ends is pretty epic. Mm. Um, so yeah, it doesn't live up to this one, but I didn't think it was bad. Uh, uh, like I said, it's not hard. I didn't finish it because I, I was defeated. I basically uh, I died at the end of it. I think it was the second time that I died, just like you. But uh, I, I just I was running short on time and didn't want to. Didn't really feel like going back into it and doing it again. But um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty much par for the course. I wouldn't call it the best one. I wouldn't call it the worst one. It's somewhere in between, and if you've played this game and you like it, um, you're you're going to like it most likely. But that said, uh, I do think that this is a. I'm glad that we have it. I'm glad that they keep adding to this game because it's a fun game. Uh, the, the The puzzles are are difficult enough that you feel like you've accomplished something when you get done. They're not super difficult, but it's fun to play. The only problem with this game initially in its original state was is that it wasn't very long. So the fact that they keep adding content to this uh, is really uh, attacking the biggest weakness of the game, in my opinion. So, um, yeah. Roots, uh, I don't think you played the, the new DLC, did you? No, no, I didn't. Uh, I was messing around on that one level that we were saying was a pain in the ass that we'll talk about in, uh, in our review. Um Right. But no, I, I agree. I think this game is is really good, and the fact that uh, they're still adding on to it says a lot about the developers. Um, you know, like people need to start taking note. If you if you have a developer that just kind of slacks and doesn't finish a game, and then another one comes out and they do the same, just stop supporting them, and then they'll just disappear and let the people that <laughs> that actually do 
like these developers that do their due diligence and they keep you know give you a quality product those are the ones i support i mean that's what capitalism is that's why i love this country so 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 what you're trying to say is is uh fuck the devs. Right? yes fuck the debt no <laughs> no okay all right moving on um so we had the the dlc come out for I, I expect you to die oh we also have gorn come out of early access this week and we talked a little bit about gorn last week i've never played it it doesn't look all that appealing to me i'm sure i'll give it a, a shot at some point justin recommends it he says that there are things that you can unlock and, and things that make the game worth playing uh, over time uh, so i'm sure i'll give it a a, a shot at, at some point just based on everyone's recommendations but uh alex you played this game this week didn't you after it came out early access yeah i put uh, about an hour or so into it i've played there's basically nine levels you go through each level and then there's a boss fight at the end uh, and i've done five so i've done I've, i'm over halfway through now um, I am going to finish playing through it uh, and we'll probably hopefully review it maybe next week or depending if you guys have got time or the week after. But um, I've played a good half of the actual single player kind of content. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just it's just what it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's just you're in an arena, these buff dudes with tiny legs come waddling at you. They attack you in the same way. They might have a different weapon, but they're still doing the same predictable swing. I just, I'm just finding it really easy, like ridiculously easy. Uh, like even the boss fights, like there's that dude on the screen with the with the badges. He literally just he came out. The badges dropped down. They bit his own legs off. He was literally laid on the floor waddling around. I literally walked up to the dude and just beat him to death, and that was it. I'd done the boss fight, and then. Like I, I just did the other level with this guy with his big armor. I got I just got this big hammer, smacked him about four times, and he was dead. And that was the boss fight done. It's just it's just not <laughs> difficult at all. I mean, there's no real. I know you can do custom map where you can have like all the bosses come at you once, but it's just it's just for me it's just been very repetitive. Um, and yeah. I'm kind of just I'm, I'm I'm kind of just playing it just for the sake of playing it for the show and for the review rather than playing it because I really want to go back in and keep playing it. So it's, it's cool. It's fun. I have fun with it. Um, but I can only play like 15 minutes and then I'm done. And then I, I want to do. Yeah. I, I think that the, the whole purpose of this game, uh, isn't really uh, about the challenge. This is just about the, the whole visceral feeling you get by butchering helpless things. I think that's the whole, the whole point here. It's kind of a violence sandbox that you're supposed to get some kind of rush from all the blood and gore. That's why it's called Gorn. But uh, the, the problem with it for me is is that it's too cartoony. It's not real gore. It's just, you know, it's like going nutso in a Disney film or something, you know. Oh, look, it's Gaston. Mm. Oh, look, it's Gaston's guts everywhere. Uh, like I said, I think I'll, I would enjoy something like uh, blood and sor or blade and sorcery a little bit more than something like this uh, but uh, I haven't played either so I really can't speak on it too much uh, you played this before am I right or is, yeah is this your I, put, I, I put about an hour in before like two or 30 minute sessions and I've put about another hour uh, about another an hour and yeah about another hour into it since the full release so they have That's changed it. they've changed like the before they didn't really have the levels and stuff so they've got, they've got like a a kind of level you've got like nine levels and each each one they give you a weapon and then they say you need to use this weapon and then you, but the thing is you you get this weapon and then you the guys come out with other weapons and if you kill a guy he drops his weapon you can pick that weapon up it doesn't force you to use that weapon so you can use whatever weapon you want really which is something that I'd, i would prefer it if they said you need to get so many kills with this we weapon or just to force you to mix it up a bit because you can just you can get an axe unless they walk up to a guy and just go dunk and his head explodes and then walk up to another guy and just go dunk and his head explodes. And it's like, okay, well that's fun. And then you, you get this big hammer and you can just boom and he just goes flying and boom, he just goes flying. And 
it was just it was just even like there's no there was no real challenge i mean and then you just like you go through and they give you a weapon and then they'll give you another weapon and you've got another wave of enemies to kill and then there's like a free for all and then they bring a boss out which every single i've done five bosses out of the nine and every single one's been a piece of piss literally like no challenge whatsoever so yeah it's it, it just yeah is there a difficulty setting so, somewhere on there or I, I mean i don't have no idea if there is or not but maybe maybe there is actually maybe i need to look uh i don't think i didn't think there was but if there is maybe i need to turn the difficulty up um but the the thing is the guys are all the same they all do the same thing like they'll come out with a different weapon but they're all they're just they're just all waddling towards you uh you know swinging their arms about like this like that's that's basically all they do mm. And the you know the boss fights are the same guys. They've just got a suit of armor on, or they've got a, a couple of badges on their arms or something. So it, it you know they're not very smart. You know they're really dumb. It, it feels like the, the developers have basically just got these enemies and they've not really given any sort of variety to the enemies apart from the boss fights, which are just the same guys just wearing a suit of armor or something. So it's just and the arena so far out of the five levels, I've just been in the same sort of arena. I got to a bigger arena, but you're still kind of just in an arena, and there's no real variety to the levels. The, the footage we're showing now, I don't know if this is maybe the final level, but this looks different, so maybe I, I haven't got to this bit yet, but I'll keep playing. I'll play it all, and I'll review it, and, and we'll see. But I'm not, I'm not, it's not my sort of game. Maybe I'm just being too miserable, but because <laughs> I, I, everyone loves this game, and I just, uh, I'm just not. I, maybe I just I'm just not my sort of game. I'm not a really big wave footer. Wave footer. I'm not a wave footer fan. I'm not a wave shooter fan. <laughs> maybe you came um, into this game a little too late with other things that have came out, and um, or just I mean I don't know. To me, it's it's it is what it is. You get somebody down on the ground and you pulverize their head until it's a mush, um, and you can't. Yeah, you can't. repeat and repeat and, <laughs> and repeat. 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 <laughs> well, see, well, you see, I can I can see the draw in that. I would enjoy the bloodbath aspect of it. And I understand the concept here. Uh, it just doesn't come across to me in this particular art style. But I, I, will, say that, I, but be, I will say it looks a lot better in the headset that's what I was, than it does in I was going to say, video. so maybe being in there, that's, smashing that's, them around. That's exactly, that's what I was literally saying, is that maybe I need to put the headset on and try it. Maybe I'll like it. Because uh, I can definitely see the, the draw in the concept. It's not about the challenge. It's about the blood, the guts, the gore of it, and uh, it doesn't look like much from a flat screen. But the, you know, I've I've experienced enough other games to know that uh, the screen isn't a very good representation sometimes. So maybe I just need to get in there and try it out. Yeah, you should try it definitely. And I bet I'd, I'd like someone else to come in and hopefully you know not shit on it as much as me because I'm just not a big fan. Uh, it's okay. I don't think it's worth, you know, singing any science dances. Uh, I think I think when this came out, it was kind of like the only of its type. You know, it was the first real kind of melee combat sort of that did it kind of half decent. So I think it's just built up a bit of a following, and, and obviously every time a new develop a new one user comes in, Gorn's a game that keeps getting mentioned over and over again, and it's just it's just popular because of that reason. Uh, I don't think personally it's particularly that good of a game myself. You're dead to It'd me. It'd be cool if they could, no, if, <laughs> if they would let you, uh, if they would let you, like personalize the soundtrack on it. Like if you could play your own music behind the the sound effects of the soldiers and stuff. I could see me getting into this and putting on some Slayer or something and just going nuts in it. Uh, I, that might be pretty fun actually. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, we need to give it a shot. Yeah. I don't want to. It's fun. It's fun for like I say. I've had. I'm not. It's not like I'm not enjoyed it at all. But it's just like 15, 20 minutes of just beating some guys to a pulp. It's how much? How long can you do that for until you get bored? You know. So it's like uh, Tyrion Lannister's cousin with the uh, Beatles. <laughs> gish, gish, gish. Those of you out there know what I'm talking about or laughing, and those of you that don't. Watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, I was say. Uh, Roots, do you have anything you want to add on on uh, Gorn? Did you play it this week? I did not play anymore. I've played it in the past, but I haven't didn't get a chance to check out the um, anything new that came out. So, okay. 
Well, we'll come back to this. If somebody picks it for a, a review game in the coming weeks, I'll jump into it and, uh, and you can jump into it and see if there's anything more to the update other than the, just the uh, structural changes that, that Alex just described. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot different about it, mainly just the structure, the way the game's laid out, but the, the fundamental gameplay seems to be what it always was. Anyway, moving on, um, Battlewake. The Battlewake closed beta started just uh, yesterday. Who's that? Or... <laughs> Who's that? that? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday or the day before? Did you put this up on your channel? No. Uh, by the way, no, because uh, for some reason my voice meter didn't uh, it froze or something. So I had a game <laughs> with no audio, and I thought, oh, well, at least I can use the footage for something. It wasn't wasted. Um, yeah, so I was a little bummed. I might go back in and put some something else out just because um, it is, you know, still in beta. So, yeah, a lot of people curious about this game right now, myself included. Uh, of the three of us, Roots is the only one who uh, signed up for the beta, and we we talked about why, but you know, in previous episodes, go back if you were you're curious. But uh, I am curious to how this game is. It looks really cool, especially after their last. E3 presentation, my interest level went up quite a bit for this game. So I'm interested to hear your take on how it plays. Did you have a lot of fun in here, or was it uh, all shine and no substance? It was fun. Um, I, I'd like to see the campaign. They only let you do the, uh, like, battling against other um, computer or other players. I didn't do against other players because I didn't want to embarrass myself um, and die. Uh, so you're just essentially going around and blowing up. Um, like they had different missions, uh, or I guess you went to. Um, I did this, blew up this base, and then there was another ship, and then there was another person that I did like five stages. Another pirate that I didn't pick, um, and and uh, just really just fighting ship to ship. Um, it was cool. Uh, one couple tips I will tell people if they do try it. Um, one, you can only have your hand on one hand to steer and the other hand shoots. What, whichever one you want. If you try to grab both hands, you're going to frustrate the fuck out of yourself. Um, I wasted a lot of time doing that. Also, there are two chains. Not just one. There's two. One on each side. And that's how you steer. You grab it and it whips your boat around once you get that mechanic down that's the key because you'll see all these skulls popping up all over the place well that's the mortar from the other ships or whatever so you want to you don't want to be going right in the middle of that and you can ship sink pretty quickly but uh and it didn't seem to be any consequence or at least from what i did i'm assuming if you were really fighting somebody you would lose and you would care um but uh um i would die and then my sink ship would sink and then i'd be right back in it and the enemy ship would still be where it was at so um the only thing is i you know i love sea of thieves i i wanted to get off the boat i wanted to go fucking slice some people and do shit so for what i wanted it to be i don't think it's exactly what i would want and i'd still be interested to see what the campaign is but um for what it is for ship to ship combat it's pretty cool and it's um as you can see you're you're controlling the guns on um all around either side or even in front and uh, so there's a lot of maneuvering and a lot of whipping around and coming back around. And so uh, it sounds like something that you would think would be fun. It, it, it was pretty cool. It was fun for what I did. I'll go back in and try some more um, before the beta's up to try to film it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, my hopes for what it was going to be are, are a little dash. But, you know, I'm not going to judge, you know, off of the beta. So Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks really fast-paced. Looks kind of arcadey. Mm -hmm. The gameplay is it? Does it play like an arcade game? Yeah, it's very arcadey. You have all those numbers popping up, and um, it, I mean, it it doesn't like I said that there doesn't seem to be too much consequence to um, to messing up. But uh, you know, that could be wrong. But uh, yeah, it's a very arcadey, quick, fast paced um thing and i i kept trying not to slam into those rocks as well so but like i said the key is really those those chains once you get the the turning around um you can uh you can do a lot more um with the game than it took me probably another five or ten minutes and we'll be able to watch to get it really get it down so yeah i bet you're right too there, there may not be very many consequences here but i bet if the waters were full of of uh, other live players that it probably would get pretty nuts fairly quickly. Um, yeah, looks cool. It, it uh, 
it's it's intriguing. It looks unique, and that's really what I uh, one of the things about Servios I really like is every title they do is so different than the last one, uh, and everything really uh, high quality. It always works. It always looks great. Um, kudos to them. Uh, Alex, you have any questions for Roots about this game? Are you interested in it at all? Uh, no questions. No, I'm, I'm still interested in it. It looks okay. I mean, yeah, it's just one of them. I think I need to try it myself to know whether right. I like it or not. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me too. It doesn't look like any amount of uh, explaining and talking is going to really let you know how this one plays because it's so different from anything else that's ever really been out. So I think you're right. I think we're just going to have to play this one to find out for ourselves. All right, uh, moving on, winding down, getting close to the bottom of the list here. Uh, Battle Wake wasn't all that Roots played this week. There was another game that he wanted to play, uh, or that he played, that he wanted to share with everyone and talk a little bit about. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you now. Roots, what game did you play, and, and uh, what did you think about uh, it? Okay, well, the game that I uh, – it's funny how it happened, too, because, like, I had this on my wish list for probably a month or two because um, it just looked cool to me and, and I kept hearing from people how cool it was and then I saw a Zim stream in it and I thought, oh my God, I need to, like, I because I literally was in his chat and I said, what is this game? And they said, the Morgan. I thought, oh shit, I have this. I, I had already bought it. I hadn't really played it much. Um, but as you can see, it's a dungeon crawler. But it, it, what's cool about this is is the unique art style, the mechanics of the fighting, the, you know, like you get a, an arrow and you can dip it in fire and shoot it and you got traps popping all over. I mean, I open a door and I go through and this, this trap, bam, fucking slams down and kills me. And I'm like, oh my God, like... It just is very. It's it's only an early access. Um, so um, Alex has already uh, lifted his nose up at it, um, but uh, <laughs> it's just so unique and it, it's just so the the immersion level, just everything about it. I can see why people are raving about it, and um, and then I thought, well, I want to review it, but I, like. I need to put proper time into it, and I need you guys to do that as well. So hopefully somewhere down the road, at least Wes and I will review it. Um, I can't say when, but I, I definitely think this game, to me, is one of the best dungeon crawlers I've pl played so far. Um, and uh, it's just uh, even that the way the enemies, you know, because each enemy is different. Some are running at you. Some are kind of waddling. You got bow, um, people with crossbows. And it's just uh, it's very unique. I, th I definitely think it's worth trying for sure. Yeah. The, you know, what this game looks like to me, it looks like it was made in dreams. And I don't know if you've watched very much footage of the, the games that these guys that are these creators are making in the dreams. The PlayStation 4, mm. but th there's a lot of this, a uh, lot of art that looks a lot like this in those games, and seeing this just makes me uh, uh, that much more uh, look forward to the dreams uh, all that much more. But uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. It looks like a a, a decent, you know, uh, it looks like it's good for what it is. I don't think it's very long. I don't know if they're going to expand it. Uh, when they hit full release or not, but it looks like it could be fun. It really just depends on how it plays. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're saying that it plays good, then uh, I'm going to take your word for it. And uh, yeah, maybe we will. Uh, if you want to pick it sometime, we can review it. I'll, I'll go in and play it. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's pretty much going to wrap our show for the week. Um, I do want to miss. You know, I didn't. I was. I was going into it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there's just. There's just one more thing I wanted to mention. Not really a news story. Just something I wanted to mention really quickly, and that is the humble bundle VR sale that they're having this week. Uh, for about the next four days, I think that this uh, sale's going on. Over 40 VR titles on uh, different discounts, up to 85% discounts. Uh, some of these are on, on a very good sale. Some others are on a uh, sale unlike any that I've ever seen before. I've never seen these games so cheap. Uh, Fallout 4 VR is $15 right now on Humble Bundle. Wow. And for, for those of you who don't know how this works, this is a legit storefront. This isn't a, a third-party key broker uh, under under the table shady shit. 
like King One and, and CD Keys. This is a uh, this is a legit storefront that's set up that gives a uh, a portion of their proceeds to charity. So uh, I think that these game developers and these game stores, uh, I think a lot of the times that's the reason why Humble gets such a good deal and are able to put on such good sales. It's because at least partially it's for charity. But anyway, Fallout 4 VR, $15. Skyrim's only $20. $20 for Skyrim VR, a game that normally goes for $50. You can catch it on sale regularly for about $35. And sometimes you can get it for even 25 or 30 but very rarely do you see Skyrim VR for $20. So if you don't have this title, it's a must-own title for, for any PC VR owner, uh, pick it up $20. Uh, so the one that I took advantage of, the last one I'm going to bring up, is a game that you've heard me talk about over the last four to six weeks. Every time it goes on sale for around $15, I say, and maybe I'm going to pick it up, you know, and then mm -hmm. after it goes on sale, I'm like, damn it. Why didn't I pick it up? And then it goes back on sale, 14 bucks. Oh, well, maybe I'll get it. And then same deal. I don't pick it up. Damn it. I didn't pick it up. Well, I'm glad I didn't pick it up because I picked it up yesterday for seven bucks and that's Space Junkies. And uh, this is a, a relatively new, this game only came out uh, a couple months ago. This is a new AAA game from Ubisoft. Completely competitive uh, multiplayer game, but it's a good game. I played it in, in beta. It's a fun game, very high production value, and it released at $40, and now you can get it for $7. They're pretty much giving this game away now. And not only do you get this game for $7, but they give you an Oculus key and a Steam key. So you get two copies for 7 bucks. So even though this is a co-op multiplayer game, you can bring a friend. Uh, unheard of that, that a game this new, this high quality, to get this kind of a discount. It's, it's really crazy. Obviously, they want to fill their lobbies up before this game dies. They're trying to save it. And not only that, they're obviously uh, giving Humble Bundle a good deal to, uh, to support their charity. So kudos to Ubisoft. This is a fun game. Anybody who has a PC VR and, and has seven bucks lying around, uh, pick it up and bring a friend. Let's fill the lobbies up. And, uh, yeah, that's really all I got, guys. Um, unless you guys want to say something about any of these deals. No, I was, nope. I was just going to uh, bring up that uh, there was one game or one other news that we just recently found out about uh, with uh, Tarzan VR. Oh, uh, You're right. I did. I think that Alex right? was talking about. <laughs> You're like, no, I got it. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the. I thought you were talking about no, the other no, one. No, I was, I was talking about this list. one. <laughs> All right. So for those of you that don't know, uh, we added this one in after I made up the format. That's the reason why I forgot all about it. But yesterday, or maybe it was even the day before, uh, we got the announcement for a new game from Stone Puck Studios, Tarzan. Uh, and obviously, this is a uh, a big franchise owned by Disney, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is coming from Stonepunk Studios, as well as the team who uh, published the Exorcist Legion VR on PlayStation VR. I forget what the name of the team is. I'm sure we'll have more on it uh, later. But um, I didn't catch a lot of the details about this game, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Alex here. Alex, what do we know about Tarzan VR? Yeah, this one came. I think it was yesterday. Actually, it was it was a Comic Con announcement, and uh, yeah, it came out came out of the blue. Stonepunk Studios, and I think there's another developer that are working on him with it. So it's not just him, but I'm really happy that he's getting deals like this because the guy, if people don't know, Stone, the guy, he's, he was a single developer. He's made Primordium, which is coming out of early access soon, which I'm really looking forward to playing. But he's not really had many sales, and I've always felt like this developer deserves a lot more sales because he's very, very talented. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how incredibly talented this guy is. The, the, I don't know how he works so fast and be able to, to make so much stuff. But he's got Primordium, which he's made himself. He's got another game which he's working on, which is which is coming out at some point, which was showcased at E3. And he's also been working on this. So this is Tarzan, an officially licensed. Uh, it's going to be five. I think it's going to be episodic. So it's going to be five episodes, 
first one's coming out later on this year, so it's coming out this 2019. And you can tell why they've did with chosen Stone Punk to do this because Primordians is just such a, a lush, beautiful environment. It fits so well with 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 this uh, Tarzan gameplay. Uh, some details about what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to climb and swing through the jungle. Um, I think there's going to be like certain powers. You've got like certain visions where you can activate like fish eye and all sorts of. I don't know. I'm not a really a big Tarzan fan, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, what powers he's got, but uh, there's definitely some going to be some interesting gameplay. I mean, the trailer that they've shown doesn't really show much, uh, but if you look at the screenshots, the game looks beautiful. It's got like this really kind of blend between like a cell shaded cartoony sort of aesthetic and it looks really good. I mean, the guy at Stone Punk Studios, he knows how to make a good looking game and this looks like it's going to be good. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what price it is and how long each episode is going to be. But I thought it was worth mentioning because obviously it's another, I don't know if this is tied into a movie or if this is just going to be a completely separate thing, but yeah, it's, it's, it's another big kind of IP, which is getting come, uh, getting brought over to VR, and the fact that we we know the developer and how good he is makes me feel very confident this is going to be something worth playing. Yeah, I can I can wholeheartedly agree with you there. Primordian is just amazing, especially visually, and uh, this specific type of terrain, these jungles, is what what he excels at. the The jungles in Primordian are immense. They're they're sprawling and everything is just so gigantic and breathtaking and uh you're right they couldn't have picked a better guy uh to to design these levels and if i if this game just turns out to be uh a primordian style map that you're able to move through like by swinging like with windlands uh that's going to be fun enough in uh, of its you know by itself Anything else on top of that is just going to be a bonus. Um, so, yeah, uh, very, very talented developer in Stonepunk Studios. The other development group we were talking about earlier is Fun Train um, that brought uh, the Exorcist Legion VR. Yeah, I think they're the to... publisher, aren't they? So I think they're publishing it. Right. Uh, so right. they'll probably do them with a certification and stuff. Um, I, know, I know they post this up on... Read it, and a couple of other guys popped in and said that they were working on it as well. So it's not just one guy. Uh, maybe Stone Punk's hiring other people out or whatever. But it's really cool that he's getting people working with him and making bigger stuff because he, he's he's he's. I can just see this this Stone Punk Studios being in a few years making these you know really high end AAA games for VR. Uh, so I was, I'm I'm glad that he's getting some. Some sort of deals, and he's going to make, start finally start making some money on 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 his on his work. Again, agree. He's he's an amazingly talented uh, developer, and yeah, he has to have help, man. If, if he's, I mean, I read the, the the update notes for Primordian, and that is a massive update of an already beautiful game. And uh, on top of that, uh, what was the name of the game that? Was it like Age of Darkness or Days of Darkness or something like that? Mm, something uh, begin with D, I think. I can't remember what it was, but it, yeah. it, it didn't really show much, but it looked it looked interesting. And again, it looked like it was going to be a cool world and something different. So, so he's yeah. got those those two projects already, and now this on top of that, obviously he has to have help. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, an amazingly talented developer, and that alone makes me interested in Tarzan. Uh, Roots, uh, have you played very much Primordian? And if so, are, are you uh, are you looking forward to Tarzan at all? I am, actually. I, uh, that's the only reason why I um, am looking forward to it is because of my time in Primordian. Like Anthony says, it's like being in... Uh, um, What's that? Predator. Yeah, Predator movie. It's just so cool. Like they, the lighting, the the graphics. Like he he really does know how to do. Um, like you said, the forest scene. So I am kind of psyched to see his spin on Tarzan and uh, and really just kind of see how the movement's gonna work and 
Um, like Alex, I, I remember watching Tarzan as a kid, but um, I don't know anything about it except for that there's Jane and he <laughs> screams when he's swinging. So um, hopefully we're not doing the swing. You know, he's not screaming as we swing. But yeah, I think it'll be cool. It'll be cool if have a if cool if have power where you've got to like beat your chest and scream out into your microphone to power something. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's a that? good idea. Oh, yeah. That's a good yeah. idea, actually. Yeah, that'd be different for sure. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I can't I I can't praise Stonepunk Studios enough. Um, Primordian, guys, if you don't have Primordian, listen, you can chop your enemy's head off and eat it. <laughs> you gain power by eating your enemy's head. Now go buy it. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So that's going to wrap the news, unless I forgot something else. No, nope. I think so. No. All right. All right. We're all good. So even though we've spoiled part part of it already, we're going to go ahead and do our our game review segment where we each talk about uh, we each reveal which game that we're going to review this week and why we picked it. So we each get to pick one of the games that are going to be reviewed on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And then we're going to talk for just a moment about why we picked this game. All right. Uh, so on Monday, I guess since I've already went ahead and revealed it, uh, Alex will do you on Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. I do that every week. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, we're going to do your game, which is. I expect you to die. I yeah. expect you to die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yes, I expect you to die. I expect you to die, which is uh, we've already talked about. It, so I'm not going to really talk about it again, but um, yeah, I, did, I picked it because I I just felt like it. No, I, I picked it because um, we the, obviously the DLC drops and it just felt like a good time to to go in and, and give it a good review. And then I, I didn't even realize for some reason. I just assumed you guys had already played this game before, so I was like thinking, oh yeah, I can pick this, and you guys have already played it, and you can just do the DLC, and it turns out both Wes and Roots haven't played it, so then like they're having to, they messaged me on Discord, oh, I've been having to do this submarine level, and you know, they're, they're not happy with me, so <laughs> sorry. But yeah, we're, no, we're no. going we're gonna to review it on Tuesday, so. No, no to, be, to be clear, and, and not to spoil the review or anything, but I'm glad I played the game. I had fun in it. Uh, I mean, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but it is mostly. I, I did enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I had no problem playing this game. I, I was glad to play it. All right. Uh, so, Wednesday, let's go with you, Roots. What did you pick and why? All right. So, I decided to pick uh, everybody's favorite uh, wave shooter, or is it a wave shooter? Dick Wild 2. Um, and uh, this is actually my my gameplay here. I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I was trying to pick something that um, that I know we'd all tried, and I don't know if Alex has tried it. I know you've tried it because we we played um, co-op. I, I think it's a underrated. I think it's a, um, it's really, for what it is, it's done very well. And it's probably the, one of the most challenging wave shooters or on-rail shooters, whatever you want to call it, that I've played um, in quite a while. And it can frustrate the fuck out of you. So that's why I chose it. Um, and if you notice here in this little bit here, no matter what I do, I can mess with everything, but I what I can't do is I can't get a reaction out of Dick. Now I've been, I've tried I've tried to get him pissed. I shot his VR headset off of his his uh, little shelf there. I mean I've thought I would have pissed him off by now, but yeah, he's pretty cool cool um, headed. So yeah, I couldn't get him to move either. I even shot his toaster, shot the toast up in the air, and shot the toast out of the air, and still nothing out of that yeah, guy. He's chilling. <laughs> he must be on uh, some Xanax or something with his moonshine. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that leaves me coming up on Thursday. I have chosen to review Accounting Plus. And uh, the main reason I chose to review this game is because just I want to play it again, honestly. Uh, I got this game when it came out for PlayStation VR all those many uh, months ago. I played through it, enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but since then, it's had a couple of updates. I've got it for PC now. I bought it on Viveport. I also have access to it on Steam. Uh, and I've never really played it on the, the, the PC before until today. Uh, so 
basically this is a hilarious game uh, that's uh, that has uh, some very unique aspects to it that I, I won't get into save it for the review but uh, yeah it's a very fun very funny game and uh, I really wanted to play it again so we're gonna be talking about that on Thursday all right so that's gonna wrap up our weekly Sunday show the our weekly news and review show and uh, if you've made it this far I want to thank you for sitting through this whole deal we really appreciate it you guys uh, just to run down the week of content again uh, of course today our weekly show uh, and are then we, tomorrow are we doing the premiere thing this week called till I've already, already watching it on premiere uh, yeah I, unless there's some kind of glitch technical difficulty yeah, uh, you just you're yeah, like, wait so, a minute, we already are watching the premiere. Good point. Yeah, we're, we're in, <laughs> sorry, but no, <laughs> this is pre-recorded, bitches. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, but um, yeah, well, uh, you're watching this. Obviously, you know that it's uh, on premiere. No, we did. We meant to do the premiere with last week's last week's show, but uh, I scheduled the premiere too early. So I tried to back it off, and I was just going to come back in later and uh, and schedule the premiere over again. But it, obviously, apparently, YouTube won't let you do that. Once you One shot. Uh, cancel a premiere, then you're done. You're not doing a premiere. So um, live and learn like many things, other things with YouTube, like their video editor. Nobody ever, ever try the YouTube video editor unless you want to wait for a week on your video to render. Um, but yeah, lesson learned, we're probably going to start doing the, the premieres at least for the next few weeks and see if people like them. And if so, we'll just keep on uh, releasing them that way. So yeah, definitely start looking for our Sunday shows, uh, between noon and 1 a.m. Eastern time, uh, every Sunday. Uh, okay. So Monday show, Alex, tell us about the topic once again for our Monday show. We are going to do a bit of a controversial topic, but with Tetris Effect coming out as an exclusive on Epic, we decided uh, we're going to we're going to do um, exclusives. You know, VR exclusives. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? We're going to talk about it, pros cons, uh, and see if we can figure out whether it's uh, something that people should be interested in. Yeah. So we're going to do what we generally tend to do when we tackle these larger topics we're going to take a divisive subject apply generous amounts of logic to it <laughs> and and bring you guys along for the ride so hopefully um hopefully we'll have a better understanding of uh the way people are feeling and why basically coming out of this and uh yeah i look forward to this one this is a this is one people go on and on about day after day week after week and um, I think it's pretty pretty cut and dry when you when you lay it out but uh, we will talk about that tomorrow all right so then comes Tuesday and Alex's review I expect you to die on Wednesday Roots's review Dick Wild 2 and then on Thursday to round out the week my review accounting plus so again folks I want to thank you for watching if uh, you have liked what you've seen thus far click the like button and if you haven't subscribed already please do so and don't forget the notification bell to keep up with all of our daily topic so and I'll, I'll just say if you didn't like this video why the fuck are you still watching it it's like <laughs> nearly two hours long yeah you're a masochist right <laughs> yeah get up and change change the video lazy ass come on <laughs> dickhead anyway yeah prick <laughs> all right anyway for uh, for these two guys, I'm Wes, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. See you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.